When you first put a needle down on a, on a 78 and you hear that sound, you know it was a very unique and genuine sound. When I woke from my dreaming, my idols were clay, a portion of love had all flown away. The lilting music of the Carter family sprang from the hills of southwest Virginia, but it flowered in Henrico County. For about six years during the 1940s, Maybell Carter and her young daughters, Helen, June, and Anita, set roots in central Virginia. It was during this time that the Carters recast their family's legendary musical act, earned a living, and shaped their talents for the masses. They liked Henrico, yeah, they lived on Mountain Road. And the house is still there. When Mother Maybell and the three girls started, they started out in Richmond and lived in Richmond. Well, I heard about him, Glen Allen liked them because they were just plain, down-to-earth country people. All of them were very talented. There was a vaudeville quality to Mother Maybell, Helen June, and Anita. There was a show quality. They all had their special talents. Whereas I think the earlier version of the Carter family with A.P., Sarah, and Maybell was the purest form of the music. Oh, can the circle be unbroken? The original Carter family act was formed decades earlier on Clinch Mountain in southwest Virginia's coal country. You could say it started in 1914. That's when Alvin Pleasant Carter, a musically inclined, lanky young man, roamed to another side of the mountain. As the story goes, he stopped when he heard singing and looked into the dark eyes of 16-year-old Sarah Dougherty. The couple married and were later joined by Sarah's guitar-playing cousin, Maybelle Addington. She too became a Carter once her pale blue eyes had charmed A.P.'s younger brother, Ezra. Together, A.P., Sarah, and Maybelle played music that blended gospel, old ballads, and whatever else was ringing from the mountainside porches and churches. A.P. would go out and search for songs. He would literally leave for days on end. He was a wanderer and would go out into the hillside and recover these great songs and would bring them back for Sarah and Maybelle to learn with him. And that's what gave them the fuel to basically carry that musical style. They put their twist on traditional music. You know, those songs came from traditional places that were back in the hills and the hollers from the middle 1800s up through when AP found them. And AP would bring them back and then Sarah and Maybell would work them out with AP in tow and they would make it count. My home's in old Virginia among the lovely hills the memory of my birthplace Lies in my bosom still. Ralph Peer was, um, he was a talent scout for RCA Victor Records. He was recording local talent throughout the South, and he was looking for talent to record. And they went to Bristol, the Carter family, A.P., Sir, and Maybell, and recorded on the second day of August, 1927. They took off, they sold real well, and then they called them back for several more sessions and then they recorded from 27 to about 1943 as a family group. When he heard them I think he knew he had a winner and uh, there's a great story about the sessions where uh, they didn't even know the records had come out the first one and uh, I happened to be down in Bristol where the recordings had happened and, and heard one of their records being played on the street uh, in front of the, the record store and, uh, and that was when they discovered that they, their records had actually been issued. As an honesty to it that's just undeniable, it's magic. I mean, it's, it's hard to know how, where that came from, but it, it's really remarkable. They stood in the moonlight nearby the AP and Sarah 
were married and they divorced, which was kind of unheard of back at that time. You didn't hear of a lot of divorces. And uh, when they divorced, it made it hard for them to work together, from what I understand. Uh, maybe it was just awkward. And Cyril never did have the, um, the feel for the music that Maybell did. Cyril liked uh, to do the recordings, but she didn't like personal appearances. And uh, I've heard Maybell say it, and I've heard Sarah also said that she didn't care for the personals. Way by the river so clear. They're country music, but they're more like a traditional mountain country music, bluegrass music, gospel music mix. It's uh, all mixed up in one, you know. They're not like today's country. Bring back my blue eyed boy to me. The Carter family made quite a mark arranging and recording scores of hit records. But AP and Sarah's split forced a change. While the two once anchored the group, it was now Maybell's turn to lead. The girls, Helen, June, and Anita, were still young, but they proved their worth in carrying the family's musical tradition. They forged east, drawn by a small radio station, in the big city, Richmond. In 1943, Maybell took her girls, and they saw an ad in Richmond, Virginia, that they were looking for talent on WRNL radio. So they took the bus from Poor Valley up to Richmond. And Helen said when they got up there, the guy that was supposed to interview them, it was time for him to go to a meeting or to lunch or something, and he told them they'd have to come back later, and they explained to him they were on the bus, and they had to catch a bus back home. So he said, well, get your instruments and uh, give me one song. So she said they got all the instruments out, and started looking at one another, what are we going to do, you know, what should we do? And he said, oh, you're corny as hell, I'm going to hire you. So she said they didn't even have to do a song. They just packed up and went back to Mesa Springs to move back to Richmond. So they moved to Richmond and they lived in several locations. I know they lived on Mountain Road and uh, a couple different places in Richmond. r &L was a small station, but the fact is, is it was a base of operations for them. Um, they were allowed to set up many small stations where were made to be a base of operations for an artist or a group where they would primarily set up, would work out of, derive fans, and then would promote themselves from within the station to build impact for themselves outside in the market. It's one thing to hear Maybell's versions and that beautiful harmony, that beautiful lead vocal, that beautiful style but it was another thing to hear it with the sisters because you had these harmonies there that were never there before. Oh, I long to see him and regret the dark hour He's gone and neglected this pale wildwood flower. They were just totally explosive. The people, you know, the people still say that when they put the record needle down and they hear that sound, it makes an impact on them like the Beatles made an impact on Ed Sullivan. Thanks to the power of radio, Mother Maybell and the Carter sisters saw their popularity explode. They became polished professional entertainers and cheered extensively. Beautiful, beautiful In 1946, they landed a spot with Virginia's largest radio station, WRVA, and its premier stage for Hillbilly Fun. Time now for the Old Dominion Barn Dance. We thought it was a big deal. We were going to the Old Dominion Barn Dance. That was a big thing. In the 40s and 50s, the Old Dominion Barn Dance was very important to what was going on in, in Virginia's culture and also East Coast culture because it broadcast, it went out so far, it, the signal stretched so far, but the impact was so great because for those people who couldn't get to the live show, if they didn't go down to the Lyric Theater and see the shows or were there personally, they would listen to the radio. Well, the Old Dominion Barn Dance was very, very nice. In fact, it was the only place to go in Richmond that had that type of show. And I know my parents used to take us down there. That was their 
outing on Saturday nights. People went down there at the old Eric Theater down at Ninth and Broad, and there was always a big crowd there, and I like country music, so that's why I enjoyed it so much. That was our Saturday night fun, I guess you call it. The entertainment in Richmond and the surrounding area. Nothing around here like it. Just like we promised here again are the stars of the Old Dominion Fine Dance, all wound up, ready to sing and play and transcribe those hillbilly and western tunes you've been waiting to hear. But there's no more waiting because it's time for celebrating on the Old Dominion Fine Dance today. On the Old Dominion Fine Dance today. You could have audiences of two to three thousand people, and that's how these bands knew they were doing something special. Um, they would go from playing to audiences of 30 to 40 to 50 people to playing to audiences of 1,000 to 2,000 at a time and really realizing that their impact was growing. So it was a very electrical atmosphere. It was where people wanted to be. It was where the artists wanted to be because they were promoting and honing their craft. And it was, it was a party for them. That was a big thing to go to Bond Dates on Saturday night. I mean, you just felt real special when you went down by them. The Carter sisters were stars of the stage, but they also led normal lives. Helen, the oldest, had finished school by the time the family arrived in Central Virginia. June graduated from John Marshall High in Richmond. Anita, the youngest, attended the old Glen Allen School in Henrico. The family moved to the county in 1947, buying a two-story home on what used to be Mountain Road. It still stands today near where Old Mountain Road joins Old Springfield Road. Despite address changes, the girls developed fast friendships with other teens and left quite an impression. I grew up in the neighborhood with them, the old in Barton Heights in Richmond. I knew June, I went, eventually went to school with June at John Marshall High School. They were just nice people. And you always felt welcome when you went in that house. It, it wasn't anything like going through a line. You just, you just went in. That was them. That was, they were there. That was it. I'd call a regular girl and a talented regular girl, a talented singer, and a regular girl, very pleasant, and nothing highfalutin about her. She was uh, in a chorus and in a choir. And I think she probably was in a play or two. I don't remember the play if it was one. I don't remember that much about it, but uh, I guess I don't know anybody could compete with her in that, that time. The cadet corps was something you really were proud to be in. You had to be a rat for a year. June, she was a sponsor. But that was a big to-do. Then they have, you had sponsors day once a year, and everybody, a lot of students came down there, and all the sponsors would be down there and be pinning the colors on them. It was a pleasure you met her. I wouldn't have any hesitation. I'd like uh, any, any girl I know who grew up like her would have been fine with me. Anita went to school with me and I had four big brothers and you know how they know all the girls. And so one of them was in the same class that June was in. And so we just all got acquainted through that, being in the neighborhood. Anita went to Chandler with me and then we went to John Marshall. And during our first semester, John Marshall, I'm not sure whether she completed the whole semester or whether she moved when we got into school in June to Glen Allen. A lot of people didn't know that they ever lived in Glen Allen, but they did. They lived on Mountain Road in Glen Allen. And I first met Anita when she was going to Glen Allen High School. And we rode the same school bus. So we got to know each other. And she was a good friend over the years. We would go to their house on Sunday afternoons mainly because that's when they were free. Um, and they would just open their doors to everybody to come in. Anybody that wanted to come, the house was open. If you wanted to eat, fine. If you didn't, that was fine. If you wanted to join in in the music, that was fine also. Uh, but they, they were just open, honest country people. You didn't have to have a reason to just go over there, but you always felt welcome. And I used to tell June, I said, how in the world you let all us come in here? <laughs> mm -hmm.
you would do what was called a guitar pull. You would sit around and you would pick up, you would play everybody's instrument and you would pick songs. You would call out songs. Okay, which one do you want to do? And you know, these jam sessions still happen today. Um, Mother Maybell, Helen June, and Anita did these house parties and were able to bring people over that would play music with them. I would say that they formulated their act, formulated their program. I don't know what kind of a, a program they had of music before they came, but I know that they were putting it together when they were here. I, this I know because uh, I think they, well, they were trying things out, let's put it that way, to see, see what people liked and what they didn't like. Everybody around here knew where they were going. Up. The Carters honed their act for the Old Dominion barn dance wherever they could, in living rooms, schools, churches, and community centers. Their shows provided wholesome family fun and charmed audiences of all ages. All I remember is the Carter sisters at the Elko Community Center. That was probably the most outstanding thing that we ever had down there as far as other entertainment was concerned. A lot of those acts in the beginning when they were starting out, that's what they did. They probably appeared in all the local churches, at the local schools, and at the local community centers. Everybody was just interacting with each other and they would see nice things that were good from the six-month-old to the 96-year-old, everybody would enjoy it. And that's what kind of entertainment they had. The Carter sisters practiced in Elko before they made it big to become legends. I'm a member of Glen Allen Baptist Church. We had church services at that time on Sunday night, and they would come and, and do singing for us. And everybody just loved it. It was just plain old country church at that time. Mother Maybell's faith was strong, and all of her daughters. Uh, they didn't always get to go to church because of the, you know, the, the shows and the traveling and all, but they went, Helen said they went every chance they got. And uh, they used to sing in church. They had a lot of class, they had, a, they had faith, uh, they were religious people. A lot of the, but half of their music was religious music, you know. Half of their songs were religious. Mother Maybell had the faith and drive to make the Carter family a success. But that doesn't mean the life of a country music artist was easy. Traveling to shows meant long, cramped car rides, but Maybell proved her mettle. Those girls would be going to school, and June was going to John Marshall's. So I could keep up with her. They'd go somewhere like Brickfield tonight. Mama Maybell would drive them down, drive them back, and they'd go to bed and get up in the morning and go to school the next day. Most of the time, they did it on the weekend, but uh, if something came up unusual in the middle of the week, Mama Maybell, she had that heavy foot, boy, she'd take off that thing. And we guys thought that was neat, see, or cool, as they say in their day. They drove a white Kaiser, and that white Kaiser, they had all the instruments in the car with them, and you could hardly see them for the instruments in there. I remember that big bass that the Anita played was up in the back, you could hardly see anybody. Yeah, that was true. I've heard them tell that, but how they'd all pack in the car with the instruments and go. And then they got a little trailer that they pulled behind the car. And uh, Helen said they were coming out of Petersburg one night, pouring down rain, and uh, Maybell was known for driving wide open. She didn't know but one speed because they had to get where they had to go. And a lot of times, not very much time in between, you know. Maybell said, girl, she said, get up quick. She said, that goes a little trailer, just like ours and the trailer had come unhooked from the car <laughs> and passed them. Helen said it passed them, I don't know, but she said it passed them on the right-hand side and went through this man's fence about two o'clock in the morning and the tongue of it just knocked his steps right off his porch. And uh, she said her mother was about to die. She got out, you know, she was so sorry. And he said, well, what are you doing out this time of morning with these young girls, two o'clock in the morning? And she said, well, I'm Maybell Carter and we play on uh, the Richmond radio station, uh, and we were down here doing the show, and she said, somehow my trailer come unhooked and passed us, and she said, we've just torn your fence down, and we've knocked your steps down, and she said, we need to uh, pay you for the damage. 
And he said, no, he said, ma'am, you don't have trouble. He said, we have trouble. And what they'd done, they'd run their little trailer in the middle of this man's mother's wake. His mother had passed away. And they were having the wake that night. So anyway, Helen said they took them in and fed them all kinds of cake and fried chicken and potato salad and whatever they had, you know. And she said then they asked them to do uh, the circle be unbroken around his dead mother. So she said they got their instruments out and played that song and sang it for that family that night. And she said that song to her meant more that night than anywhere they ever played it. Mother Maybell had been playing guitar since she was a girl on Clinch Mountain. But over the years, she crafted a playing style that allowed her to pick out a song's melody while strumming the rhythm. The technique created such a new, full sound that it was given the Carter name. The Carter scratch that Mother Maybell played was, she played the lead with her thumb on the upper strings, and then she put in the, the rhythm with her finger at the bottom on the bottom strings. There are guitar players out there today who still work on getting the Carter scratch down, the, the way you pick with your thumb and your forefinger, and they work at it and work at it and work at it, and a lot of them don't get it. That was the one thing that really struck Ralph Peer about her when they went to make their first records, was the way she picked the lead out on the guitar, because at that time, the guitar really wasn't a lead instrument, not per se. She brought it to the forefront. What? Mother Maybell and the Carter sisters did was, and after leaving Sarah and AP, she was allowed to hone her craft in Richmond. She was allowed to go throughout Richmond with her daughters, playing these places, and really develop a sound and a style that nobody else had. Even though they sounded old time, their music was really kind of revolutionary. Uh, Maybell's guitar style was not, guitar was not an important instrument in old time music. Banjo and fiddle were the core of the old time string band. She made the guitar really a key instrument and she had that wonderful thumb lead style that she played, which is really unique, almost banjo-like. This would be the Carter Scratch style. she played it a lot better than I do. <laughs> like a good song, the Carter's time in Henrico eventually reached its end. In 1948, the family cut ties with WRBA and the Old Dominion Barn Dance. Bigger stages awaited. For the time being, we're gonna leave you. So long, good luck, and keep smiling. Everybody. It was presented to them that they wanted to sign a contract stating that they could only work for the Old Dominion Barn Dance. And June told them no, that they wasn't gonna sign the contract, and that's when they left. And then they went from Richmond to uh, Knoxville, to the midday merry-go-round, and that's where they met Chet Atkins, and he started playing guitar with them. They took him to Springfield, Missouri, and they did a lot of transcriptions and radio shows in Springfield, and then from Springfield, they got the offer to come to the Grand Ole Opry. To me, I just look at the Carter family as the first family of country music. And that's what the history books say also, so. <laughs> I can't think of another country artist that has the, the body of work that the Carter family had. They weren't just from southwestern Virginia. They were everybody's band. And if you mention folks from that era, they can still tell you where they were, what they were doing, and when they first heard the Carter family here in central Virginia. With the Carter family, with Mother Maybell, even being in Richmond from 43 to 48, it's not the length of time, it's the amount of reach. And they had a deep reach. I think their legacy will just continue on.